Hello e-commerce sellers, this is Kashin from Ledger Gurus and in today's video I want to walk you through how to file taxes franchise tax. Um, before we dive into the details, if you haven't, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell sign so you get notified every time we come up with a new video. Okay. So in this video, I want to cover what is franchise tax, who needs to file, who has the obligation to file, what are the thresholds, uh, what are the due date, and then I'm going to walk you through and screen share with you and show you how to file the franchise tax step by step. Okay, <clears throat> so front taxes is a really great state for business to conduct their business in because it doesn't have a personal income tax and it also doesn't have a business corporate tax. So lots of people like to do business in Texas, but Texas does have this thing called a franchise tax. And the franchise tax is different from sales tax because instead of taxing the end consumer, franchise tax kind of tax all the process, all the businesses that are involved in a process from the production to the end distributor all the way through. So it's like a margin tax or some people call it turnover tax. So pretty much all the businesses have to file franchise tax if they conduct business in Texas or if they pass the economic nexus economic nexus threshold as a remote seller, which is $500, $500,000 in a calendar year. So a lot of people, when they sign up for, when they register for a uh, sales tax permit, they'll also like automatically open a franchise tax account. Um, so franchise tax, the way I think about it is the privilege of doing business in Texas and it's taxed for all the businesses that are in all the spectrum from the production to the end distributor. And there is really no way to not file franchise tax unless you don't have nexus, you don't conduct business in Texas, or you don't, or you're a sole proprietorship or a general partnership. All the other type of businesses need to file franchise tax. So the due date of the franchise tax is March, is usually May 15th, but because this year the income tax deadline got pushed over one month, so Texas extended its franchise tax deadline as well. So now it's June 15th is the deadline for calendar year 2020's Texas franchise tax, and it's an annual return. And the easiest way to file it is to go to its website to go to Texas web file uh, website and submit the return that way. Or if you're not ready to submit the return, you can always file an extension. So very similar with your federal and state income tax, you can file a an extension up to six months. So then it won't be due this year. It won't be, um, it won't be due until like uh, like November or December towards the end of the year. It'll give you six months of extension. But just the same as federal income tax, um, the extension to file is to extend six months to actually filing the return, but it's not an extension to pay. So you still need to make payments as you are filing your extension. And there's a threshold um, of the amount that you need to pay to not incur penalties and interest on the instructions. And I'll link that form down in the video's description. So if you need to file an extension, you can just go there and fill out the form. And the form has instructions. Uh, it's pretty simple on how much you need to pay down to go along with the form as a part of finding the extension. Okay, so we talked about what franchise tax is. It's a margin tax and it's a business tax. Who needs to file? Pretty much everybody that has Nexus in Texas, <laughs> um, especially if you're a remote seller, like they automatically open a franchise tax account for you. The due date is coming up. It is June 15th this year, or you can file an extension. And who's exempt are usually sole, sole proprietorship as well as general partnership. Also, if you are, if your sales amount 
in the whole country, in the whole, like all the states combined, is less than $1.18 million, then you don't owe any franchise tax. You still need to file a no tax a no tax due return. And I'll show you next step when I share my screen, um, all the different options. But if you sell if you sell under $1.18 million, like all of your sales, not just to Texas, then you don't owe any franchise tax. If you sell more than that, between $1.18 and $20 million, you will need to file this easy form. And if you sell over $20 million, in 2020, then you need to file this long form um, franchise tax return. And it just like the difference between the easy form and the long form is just the different deductions you can take. And it's still pretty simple and you can do it. And I'm going to show you step by step on logging into the web file page and filling out the return. So let's do it. So before we log into the Texas Comptroller's website, which is what this page looks like, at one point or the other, you would have received a document that looks like this from Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts. And at the bottom, it'll tell you your taxpayer number and your web file number. And your web file number for sales tax starts with RT and followed by one, two, three, four, five, six digits. Um, sometimes if you don't see the web file number for franchise tax, you can go from the web file number for sales tax and change the last digit to one more and change the R to X. And that'll be your web file number for franchise tax. So for example, um, this client, their web file number for sales tax is RT590914. Then I know for sure their web file number for franchise tax is XT590915. So, and you'll see why we need uh, to use that number in a second. So we're gonna log into this client. You've seen you you've seen that on here. There's franchise tax and sales and use tax. Um, we also have another client that I'm gonna put side by side that they only have sales and use tax that they don't have a franchise tax. So if you already do, this is where you click to go file and pay. If you don't, you need to add taxes and fees. And I'm gonna show you that process first. So we need to enter in the uh, taxpayer number first. So again, you can find that information from the letters that you got from Texas and then continue. So we so we can see on here sales and use tax is assigned, but the franchise tax is not assigned. So we want assignment. And to be able to file everything online, then we need to put this XT followed by six digit number. And that's where sometimes if you already know your sales and use tax web file number, you can use that to get <laughs> to your XT number. Let's see, yeah, so this is good. And then we can just submit changes, um, agree, continue to make taxes and fees. And now you have both uh, franchise tax and sales tax. So. Um, so this is how you, you would go here to add franchise tax if you don't see franchise tax as an option. And once you've added it on here and you're ready to file, let's click on file and pay. So on here you can see you can request an extension here. You can do it online or you can fill out this extension request. And all of that is from Texas Franchise Tax Report Forms for 2021. And I'll have this link up on my video for sure. So you can fill out this form and mail it, or you can do it directly here online. So you can say request an extension and then make a payment as you're choosing to extend the filing part, not the pay part. So on here, uh, usually the three three options we see is file a no tax due information report, which is if you sell under 1.18 million nationwide, file an easy computation report if you sell between 1.18 million to 20 million, and file a long form report if you, file, if you sell over 20 million in the previous calendar year, so 2020 in this case. Um, so you select one and then you continue. 
select the year and say continue. So then it takes you to this report. Or if you go back and you need to file easy or long form, it's the same process. So click on right here, the report year is 2021, due date is this June 15th instead of May 15th because there is a one month extension and continue and it goes to the reports as well. Um, without going into the specific client's report, I'm going to walk you through the actual forms this way, but just know like on the web file is where you would file this electronically. Okay, so the no tax due report, this is exactly what you're going to see on the website when you log in. Uh, so this is just an informational report. Um, on the top, these are all your informations for the entity when it pertains to taxes. So your taxpayer number, those 11 digit number that we talked about, name, mailing address, these are pretty self-explanatory. The NAICS code for online sellers is usually 454110 for um, e-commerce businesses. And then if you don't know anything, uh, like how to fill it out, you can always click on this and it tells you um, where, like it gives you more instructions. But these are all the basic information and you have to answer a, uh, a series of questions saying yes or no, any one of these questions. So any between one and five, then you are qualified to file a no tax due report. So if it's below the threshold, which is 1.18, you check on number two. If it's a passive entity defined in the code, which is um, sole proprietorship as well as general partnership, then you can check yes. If you didn't sell anything into Texas, then you check three. If, you, if it's a real estate investment trust that meets the specific qualifications, you check four. Um, if it's veteran owned business, then you check five. And then you put in information for your accounting year, and then you need to put in revenue amount. And if you're using this no tax due report, this revenue amount needs to be under 1.18 million. And then you sign and you, like it'll be the same process and you'll just submit it here online or you can fill it out and mail it to Texas. So this is the no tax due report for businesses that sell under 1.18 million. The next option is this easy computation report and it's still just one page. It's really simple. So the top ones are the same as the uh, no tax due report, except they moved up the accounting year beginning date and the end date to the top of the form. NAICS code should still be 454110 for all e-commerce businesses. And then on here, I would read instructions for every line item because on here, it actually needs all these numbers for gross sales, dividends, interest, rents, royalties, gains and losses, other income. And so one through seven, all of this needs to match exactly with your federal income tax. So if you're a corporation, it needs to match form 1121C. If you're an S corp, it needs to match 1120S1C. If it's an LLC, but tax as a sole proprietorship, then it needs to be 1040 schedule line three. So it tells you exactly where you look for it. If it's a partnership, which is very common for e-commerce businesses, then it needs to match form 1065 1C. So you can't really file the sales tax, the franchise tax return report until your federal income tax return is finalized. Until, you're, until you filed your 1120, 1120S, or 1065, or 1040, because these numbers from line one to line seven needs to match, and it has instructions. It needs to match exactly what's on your federal tax income return. And then line eight is you just add up line one to line seven and gives you the total revenue. And then gross receipts in Texas, you need to pull from your sales channel all the sales that are sourced into customers in Texas and you put on line 11. And gross receipts everywhere on line 12 should equal 
line eight, which is your total gross revenue. And then on line 13, it does math to get the apportionment factor to do line 11 divided by line 12, and then apportion that back to gross receipts in Texas in line, um, in line 10. So the only difference like a lot of people might say like, why can't I just use gross receipts in Texas and multiply that by the franchise tax rate, which is this 300331. Um, uh, the reason is uh, line nine. Line nine, there's an exclusion from gross, rece from gross revenue, which if we read the instructions is your bet debt expense. So it tells you that you can deduct your gross revenue by bet debt expense. So that decreases how much of your sales can be apportioned to Texas. And then you just follow all the math through and sign at the bottom, or you, you can submit it online or mail it to Texas Controller of Public Accounts. So then the long form, which is for businesses that sell over $20 million in 2020, everything else, everything here is the same as the previous one. It's just two pages. Um, I'm just going to point out the similarities and differences. So accounting year beginning and ending date um, that got moved from, uh, it's all right here, except for the easy, for the no tax dudes here at the bottom. So this is at the top, um, your industry code, NAICS code, this is still 454110, and then row one to row seven, it's still information from your federal income tax schedule. And then you get to the total gross revenue. Exclusions from gross revenue is the same as the EZ form, which is bet debt expense that you can find on your federal income tax return. And then the difference is after the total revenue, you can take more deductions. You can deduct cost of goods sold. You can deduct compensation and then you can compute the margin. And then you use those number to get your apportionment factor um, and to calculate how much tax is due for Texas. So whenever you are in doubt of what this number should come from, just click on the sign. So for example, if I'm not sure about what number I should put on line 15 for wages and cash compensation, then I would click on here and I would read through all of this and I would add up the number and put it on here. Um, you can do it online or you can fill out the form manually. So all these three forms are available on the website as well as on your web file page. So th those are the three forms for franchise tax return. If you have any questions, uh, how to fill out any of these lines, please comment below and we can work it out or we can get on a call and I can look at your forms for you. So that's it for Texas Franchise Tax Return. And I hope you learned the process, like who needs to file, what is Texas Franchise Tax Return, how to get access to your franchise tax filing through Texas website and how to interpret the three different forms. Um, if you have, just like what I said on the forms, if you have any other additional questions, please leave a comment below. And if you find this video helpful, please share it, like it, and subscribe to our channel. And let me know if you have any um, other questions when it comes to sales tax so I can make other helpful videos to help e-commerce sellers. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye.